Hello and uh, welcome to a very uh, long, I guess this has been a, the longest break we've taken from Jagavision, but episode 118 of Jagavision. I'm Jared Nyberg, I am co-owner of Jagasilk and we like to do these shows every week. Um, I was away um, for the last two weeks, unfortunately, but uh, we're back at it. So you can check out our shows on our YouTube channel, go to youtube.com slash Jagasilk and you can watch some of the um, uh, wonderful chats we've had with different industry folks, uh, tea farmers, um, others uh, that, that have tea companies, just really interesting folks. Um, that's 118 weeks of, um, of really great dialogue. So I really encourage you to go check it out. Um, today's show is gonna be another one of our, um, in our sort of September, October series where we're doing things quick and, 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 and fast. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our Pooh Air. So um, we have a 2006 raw Pooh Air that we're that we've um, brought in in concert with Cloudwalker Tea. So to be fair, Eric Smith has brought it in, and then um, what we've done is he's he's breaking it apart for us, um, and then we've used this this wonderful 2006 Pooh Air from um, Cloudwalker Tea, and we've um, we we've, we've put it into a sort of an open air. Uh, aging urn almost um, uh, upon his advice to see how it would taste. Um, so I'm going to drink some of that and then I want to show you um, sort of an experimental process that we're working on which would involve sort of a layered batch brew approach to some of our Gong Fu Cha style teas, teas that can handle the Gong Fu Cha style which uh, we've gone over quite a number of times in, in, in episodes leading up till now. So um, if you're watching live and you have some questions please uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to, to to be aware of them and, and answer them as we go. But anyway, um, so today, Pu'er. Uh, we may be joined by Sherry Ann of Sister Speak. The, that's the, the story. Um, there seems to be, um, yeah, she's still uh, doing her, her tour, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see if she can't join us today. The plan is that she does. So um, first of all, I've taken uh, s six grams of, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Hold on a sec. Um, <coughs> so. Ooh. That's uh, having some fun here. Um, let's go. That that's better. Okay, so you are going to put in six grams of tea into um, a little Yixing teapot. Is the plan? Um, <coughs> we're going to take some boiling water. We're going to actually break up these leaves pretty good, and we're going to cover the leaves. Is what we like to do. Give it a little bit of a rinse. So I'm going to immediately drop this. Lots of people like to use this rinse to sort of preheat their decanters and their cups, etc. But I'm a big fan of just draining it out. This gets rid of any sort of finer sediment. Some people say it's like a way of washing your tea. I, I don't know how relevant that is, but it definitely does reduce the amount of sediment in the cup and because you're breaking it, it apart pretty good. I like to use um, a coarse teapot upon recommendation of uh, Daniel over at the Chinese Tea Shop in Vancouver for these kinds of teas. They're earthier. They seem to do well um, in this uh, with this kind of um, yeah with this kind of tea. Um, and then once the I pour a little bit of the boiling water on top of the tea. Once for the most part that's evaporated off. It's a good moment to um, extract the tea. We're generally about 20 to 30 seconds of extraction. So this is a really standard method for brewing yourself a pu'er. Again, you don't necessarily need a teapot using Yixing clay, um, but it is nice to have a coarser teapot. And it's nice if it's not super slick where it's been made with some commercial uh, clay that's not really conducive to a nice extraction. Okay, so, so and I will try some out. <coughs> Yeah, and it's it's lovely. It's uh it's uh that's a really nice sort of um, rich uh, starting to extract mushroom forest everything we've come to expect from a nice uh, a nice puer. Okay, so let's let's get a decanter going too of um, for the ones that I can't finish. You want to try some of this? Okay, all right. Thank you. 
just trying some kombucha where we're just brewing. Nothing to do with today's show, but mm. that tastes like apple juice. Yeah, interesting. And very nice uh, texture, flavor complexity. Hmm. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to do another steep. That first steep, I never, ever really stop a puer at the first steep. Honestly, you got to keep going. You got to go at least like five or six steeps um, to make it make sense. So the reason I'm doing this is I want to demonstrate to you sort of on a on a day to day level what working with a tea like this would look like. Um, and then I want to do an experiment with you, which is going to involve batch brewing this very same tea. Because we have a, an event coming up on Saturday. It's our, our final um, musical tea series uh, episode or series, sorry, session six of six. We have Steve Schmiller opening the set. Um, he's an amazing musician. He used to be the lead singer of The Villains out of Calgary. And then he's since uh, been this uh, amazing visual arts painter. And then he's... Uh, been gracious enough to play guitar for my band, Truth and Dolphin, which we'll be performing after that. So we always have dessert and tea um, and the tea talks that are at noon um, when you when you buy your tickets are are uh, generally I'm the one who's interviewing the artist. But since I'm the artist this time, uh, Eric Smith is going to be interviewing me. So um, we thought it would make sense to release his uh, puer that we are doing um, collaboratively uh, during that that talk yeah so that's a lot nicer texture getting more out of this hmm. yeah I'm into this all right so <coughs> um, we're going to do one more steep and then I'm gonna show you batch brew so I'll fill that right up We'd like to do, just to give a, you an idea, is, is I generally, for Gongfucha, do one gram of tea for every 20 grams of water. So I like to say, for example, if I have a, a, a 60 milliliter teapot, I'm going to use three grams of tea. If I have a 90 milliliter teapot, most of mine are 90 mils, um, or 80 mils, sorry, then I'm going to use four grams. Um, if I use a slightly bigger Gai Wan, for example, um, well this guy here, for example, holds 80, um, 80 mils. I'm going to use uh, uh, four grams in that. Um, but for, say, a Sencha, uh, I would use one gram for every 30 mils. If I was going to make myself a standard crimson tea, I use one gram for every 60 mils. But when I was making puer with Eric, and just following him by feel, how much is he dosing? He likes to do everything kind of more meditatively. Um, he was doing one gram for every 10 mils, which is a, a twice as strong as I would normally make my, my gong fu cha. So this is along that theory. And here we are. I'm starting to get more of that syrupy quality. I'm starting to get a little bit more of the kind of um, brackish in a good way. Mushroom, umami. Mm. So very good. So working with this idea, um, I'm going to say that the 66 grams that I've used to make um, a four liter jar of cold brew, instead of doing that as cold brew. So, uh, sorry, I should back up a bit. So my, my goal today is I want to experiment with rather than doing a cold brew puer, which I am doing right now, there's one going in the, in, in, in the fridge. I want to see what would happen when I do a hot brew. So most of you watching probably make your tea hot. I mean, I, that's most of my tea is made hot, but cold brew is also a really interesting extraction methodology to experiment with. And we bottle our cold brew and then what we do is we pasteurize it to keep it shelf stable. And I'm not a big fan of pasteurization, but if I can make some really nice um, uh, champagne bottled uh, cold brew tea, 
and I can make it taste good. Um, and then pasteurizing isn't damaging the flavors or aromatics, uh, and instead perhaps transforming them into something really interesting, then I'm all in. Now, some teas are more conducive to the cold brewing process than others. For example, one of the teas we're going to be serving on Saturday is a uh, Shuelong or Snow Dragon. It's a green tea. And we just tasted the extraction today and it was fantastic. Um, however, some crimson teas that I've made in the past are a little bit lackluster. Like I enjoy them. They seem to be well received by those who are drinking them. But there's just something about the extraction that always strikes me as just missing a little bit of je ne sais quoi or something. And so what I uh, want to do is experiment with, well, if it's less about, you know, if it's a tea like this where the aromatics aren't going to burn off in, in 15 minutes and become something really uninteresting, instead it's more like an earthy tea like this, maybe I can do a, uh, a hot extraction. You know, if I do like a Darjeeling or like Darjeeling origin teas often are very fragrant. And those, that means that you have very, um, yeah, these volatile oils are going to, are going to escape very quickly. So that's why I don't like to hot brew them because there's an oxidation process that happens that's super fast. And I don't like the taste of oxidized tea oils. Um, and that's why I don't really bottle a hot brew normally. But Pu'er, the theory here, is that it's a different, it's a, it's different. So because of those earthier tones, the mushroom, the forest, it's all texture and it's, it doesn't have as much, um, of these like kind of floral aromatics. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, I'm going to take a one liter mason jar, and into this one liter mason jar, I'm going to put um, sixty grams of tea. Okay, that's my my equivalent. So I'm kind of like blowing up the Ishing teapot and little tiny decanter, and instead I'm doing this this um, 66 grams. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do something very similar um, to what I just did with you guys. I'm going to start by doing a rinse with boiling water. So what does a rinse have to do? A rinse has to cover the leaves. So I'm just going to fill this jar up until the leaves are all submerged. And then I'm going to, I'm going to empty this down the sink. Okay, it smells really nice. Could you fill that for me with the 90 degree water? Yeah. And then just rest it on the back there. Thank you. All right, so I have some boiling water. And I have, again, I have this four liter jar. So what my plan is, is I'm going to do this kind of layered Gong Fu Cha inspired batch brew experiment. So I'm going to, and this, this is, uh, I'm basically going to, so pour it in faster. I'm going to remove the lid off my temperature variable kettle. And I'm just going to pour it in the top. I'm going to fill it right up. Okay. And if you're doing this in the winter time, you want to make sure that your jar isn't too cold because you're boi putting boiling water into it. You do not want it to, you do not want it to smash like crack. So, and just to be careful, I'm going to do this a little bit away from my computer because <laughs> we don't want uh, the glass to break and cause problems. Okay, so that's about 20 seconds. Again, not as uh, clinical as say our normal cold brew process, which is to just kind of manage that time really carefully. But there we go. So that is already looking nice and, and brackish. So I'm into this. And then I'm going to 
fill some more water. Right, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do another steep. So, let's see how this goes. Dropping that in. Guess you can't really see what I'm doing. So I'll hold it up. So, what does this mean for you at home? Um, if you're watching this and this is, you know, something you want to experiment with, this is kind of an interesting idea. Is, is what if you did a blown up version of your Gong Fu Cha? And you're able to serve this to a larger group of people. Say if you had like, I don't know, a Thanksgiving dinner or something and you wanted to serve a whole bunch of tea um, to like 50 people. Um, you know, we like to drink our tea out of these little tiny um, teacups. It just it cools faster. It tastes nicer. Um, but uh, the, these little 60 milliliter, 80 milliliter teapots only go so far. Like I think it's good for two, three, sometimes four or five people. But when you get into 50 people, it gets harder and and uh, maybe that's not the right place for a tea like this and I get that but I am interested in whether or not it's possible regardless to make something taste good in this kind of layered uh, extraction approach so so far so good I mean it's it's looking really great um, it's it's steaming up pretty good so it's hard for you to see it on the camera but you get this really n really nice um, black color, so um, it's it's looking really good. Okay, <coughs> another go. I mean, this is somewhat of an extrapolation of an idea that I had for, for cafes where, you know, they feel like they have to have this, this 10 ounce, this 10 ounce drink size for teas. And therefore we end up searching for teas that produce kind of a nice flavor with less tea per mil. So it's like one of those, I'm often on the hunt for teas that um, handle that one gram to 60 mil or even stronger, one gram for 75 mils, um, that kind of idea. Um, and I end up, those are the teas that we gravitate towards because of how the economics of it work, where people want to make these bigger teacups worth of tea. I, again, I really believe that smaller is better but I don't see the harm in experimenting with something like this. And my plan is I'm gonna see how this tastes bottled. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to bottle it, pasteurize it, and then compare that to the cold extraction. Thank you. All right. There we are. Just pouring in some more. And this is this is really working out well. Like I'm seeing some really nice color. So this is this is looking great. So let's see how this goes. So again, I've used 66 grams of tea, working with this idea of one gram per kind of 10 mils ish. I'm filling up the tea this one liter jar, uh, pretty pretty full, claiming 750 mils. So I guess I'm going a little bit stronger. Here's another, another go. So, yeah. <coughs> I'm gonna empty that in and see how this, how this goes. So, so one liter jar. I have this kind of fancy. Um, you can actually 
buy these on our web page um, and you can also just get them yourself uh, we've sort of taken this idea from sprouting jars so you know you can you can get those those sieves that are meant for sprouting jars but we what we've done is we've we've replaced the cheap tin of your mason jar with a stainless steel um, ring and then there's a grommet around or sorry a gasket around the um, around the sieve so that it prevents too much dripping and then you can use any kind of wide mouth mason jar as a tea brewing device it's it's transferable if you buy it on our webpage though the mason jar brewer comes with a 500 milliliter mason jar and then that has lines on it <coughs> that, sh that delineate sort of volumetric points like one cup or like the different ounces or milliliters depending on imperial or metric <coughs> And then, uh, yeah, you get a, you get a good, uh, nice little sleeve to protect your hands from getting burned so you don't have to use a cloth like I'm using. Um, and uh, you're off to the races. Okay, so another steep. So again, your, your pu'ers are often giving you this like really full bodied full flavored extraction but they generally hits around the third steep is when you start to get a lot of depth so this idea of kind of combining all the steeps together it sort of takes away from the the journey that you would have when you experience them one steep at a time but it's sort of an alternative brewing method um, for batch brewing a hot tea i think it's interesting and it's smelling and looking great so i'm, I'm my my fingers are crossed that this is going to be good i'm going to go fill up Another couple kettles, just give me one sec. Another nice thing is you don't really need to use temperature variable kettles for this process because you just need boiling water, um, especially for your puer. So you can just like, you could even just get a big pot and just fill it up with like four liters plus of water. And then you could just, you could just, um, I mean, as long as you preheat it, you could get like a, like a big measuring cup or something. You could scoop out the water and you could pour it onto your tea and you just keep going until the end, you're just pouring that pot onto the, and then you can do this multi-layered extraction this way. <coughs> so there's opportunities here to really um, make, it, uh, make it nice and easy. All right, so this is 98 degrees. I like to bring my temperature variable kettle to 98 instead of 100 for what I consider, you know, within, well, I mean, it's within two degrees of boiling. And that way, if I forget about it, not gonna evaporate off and cause problems okay that's another steep we'll just let that kind of hang out I normally like to add about you know especially after like the fourth steep about 20 more seconds per infusion so I think if we just kind of let this permeate a little bit and get a little bit stronger I think we're gonna be in a good place all right, <coughs> um, now I am stoked. It looks like we're not gonna have Sister Speak join us. That's too bad. Um, I'll uh, feel like this is uh, zero for four over the past few ones. I know um, some uh, intention to be on the show is there. So I'll, uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see her uh, next week. We'll see what happens. <coughs> All right. So that's about one minute, and I'm going to pour that off. And then I only have, I would say, one more jar worth of room left, if that. Yeah, I don't think I even have that much room left. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually brew half a jar to fill this up. So a little stronger for the end here, which kind of makes sense. 
So you'll notice this is a very um, intuitive process. I'm not using a timer. I'm a big proponent of scales and you know uh, of, of timers. Um, but when it comes to Gong Fucha, there's a certain amount of, I think, um, ability to kind of change things up from brew to brew. So w what I like to do, though, is definitely weigh my tea. I think that's, that's pretty important. And then understand the brewing vessel that you're working with. So I know I'm working with a one liter mason jar that filled up to, you know, um, around here is about 750, 800 mils. So I know what I'm working with. Um, and I'm trying to kind of have this, this um, equivalent to, you know, uh, making this in a, in a smaller pot and, and, and see what happens, you know. So um, I, I keep adding 20 seconds. I like to kind of reference some sort of clock when I'm doing it. Um, and I like to stay present with the tea. Uh, if you can't do this, if you're making this in a bar setting, for example, then you could you could make it more clinical. So you could do definitely one gram for every 10 mils of puer, sorry, one gram of puer for every 10 mils of, of, of boiling water. Um, if you were doing, for example, fi 50 grams, then you could do 500 mils or 500 grams of boiling water. And you could let that steep for 30 seconds, the first steep, second steep, third steep, after you've given it a rinse. And then from the fourth steep onward, you could keep adding 20 seconds. If it's just not brackish enough, if it's not, if your particular um, uh, tea selection is just not producing enough uh, syrupy quality, you could um, extend that extraction time a little bit and make it more like 30 seconds. Okay, I've used a lot less water this time, so I think I'm gonna get a pretty strong brew. So I'm gonna just empty that in. All right. And then we're getting pretty full in this jar. I don't want to really take it much fuller than that. And we are eight extractions in, and we've made a really nice black puer. Okay, very dark brown, anyway. Cool. I'm excited. So I don't know if I can lift this, considering how, but if you can see that, how dark that is. Okay, I'm gonna give this a try. So let me go get a ladle. So I have a ladle, gonna give it a go. And I also, hey JV, are you around? You went upstairs, okay. I was gonna ask for a bricks meter. Okay, I can check that later, but okay, so. Here it is. This is like 10 steeps of where. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, that's nice. That's a very nice extraction. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try bottling this. I'm gonna compare it with the cold brew tea that we make of the same one and next Jaga Vision, what I'll do is I'll do a, a kind of a, contra a contrast. I will I'll compare the bottle of cold brew uh, versus this kind of multi-layered hot um, e extraction. I'm going to put them both in champagne bottles. I'm going to chill them both. I'm going to both are going to be pasteurized, and then we'll do this kind of compare and contrast next uh, next week on Jaga Vision. So see you at two o'clock next week. Um, if you have any questions about this process or if you have any comments, um, please don't hesitate to, um, uh, to um, ask them. Um, so we're coming to the end of the show. I want to show you again um, uh, the session we're doing.
in the courtyard is the final session of the year, October 8th, Steve Schimilar. He's going to be uh, opening things up, and then he's going to be my guitar player for my band, Truth and Dolphin, which will be playing the second set on uh, October 8th. It is going to be outside in Nootka Court. Uh, we hope to see you there. Tw tickets are $25. You can buy them on our webpage. And um, Tea Talk starts at 12. And then we go into a really nice uh, dessert and tea. Um, and the $25 gets you the dessert, the tea, and a contribution to the music. So hopefully you can make it out. And if you can't, maybe you can let people know about it. And uh, also, we have our, where is it? The, the tea festival. So this is happening on October 22nd. So I'm a part of the International Tea Appreciation Society. And we're going to have a number of tea vendors, including Jaga Silk, um, but also O5 Tea, Tea Can, Cultured Kombucha is going to be there. Um, we're going to have Cloudwalker, who did this puer. They're going to be there. Um, we're going to have a tea symposium. We've confirmed Mr. Takaki is going to be on the tea symposium. We've confirmed some. Uh, there's going to be a Korean tea demonstration, Japanese tea demonstration. Also at the symposium, a professor at UBC is going to be comparing and contrasting um, ancient Chinese archery with the Chinese tea ceremony. That's going to be a really fascinating talk. So it's uh, all going to be live streamed. Um, it's going to be a hybrid festival, so come on down and uh, enjoy the tea fair. Um, there's also going to be the launch of the World Tea Competition. It's going to be an awesome, awesome event. Uh, tickets are five, uh, sorry, ten to twenty dollars sliding scale donation. You can go to victeafestrevival.org to purchase tickets, um, and uh, it's going to be also held in Nooka Court. So inside Nooka Court, it'll be like a farmer's market of tea, and then there's going to be some rooms that are that uh, you'll go in for the symposium and for the, the, tea, the tea competition. So yeah, really stoked for that event and hopefully we'll see you there. That's from 11 until five on October the 22nd. So October 8th, Steve Shimlar, Truth and Dolphin, the final in our musical tea series for the year. You won't see live music in the courtyard until next year. So come check it out. And then Tea Festival, October 22nd. See you at both would be amazing. And we'll see you on JagaVision next week, 2 o'clock. I'm Jared Nyberg. Go to jagasilk.com, check out our tea selections, and uh, comment on this video. Subscribe, like. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.